Hello, I'm going to read a little bit more of the twits for you today. I hope you enjoyed it so far and we'll see how far we get today. The next chapter is called The Frog and I think it's bound to involve one of the trips that Mr and Mrs Twit have been playing on each other. This could be revenge. To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs Twit's bed. He caught a big brown one down by the pond and carried it secretly back in the box. That night, when Mrs Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itching. Dirty old hags always have itchy tummies. Then all at once, she felt something cold and slimy crawling over her feet. She screamed. What's the matter with you? Mr Twit said. Oh, help! screamed Mrs Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed! Oh, I bet it's that giant skilly wiggler I saw on the floor just now, Mr Twit said. That what? screamed Mrs Twit. Oh, I tried to kill it, but it got away, Mr Twit said. It's got teeth like screwdrivers. Help! screamed Mrs Twit. Save me, it's all over my feet! Oh, it'll bite off your toes, said Mr Twit. Mrs Twit fainted. Mr Twit got out of bed, fetched a jug of cold water, and he poured the cold water all over Mrs Twit to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a good time. When Mrs Twit came to, the frog had just jumped onto her face. This was not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. By golly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, Mr Twit said. It'll bite off your nose. Mrs Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the night on the sofa. And the frog went to sleep on her pillow. The next chapter is called The Wormy Spaghetti. You can probably guess what might happen. The next day, to pay, Mrs. Twit, to pay Mr Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big, long ones and put them in a tin and carried them back into the house under her apron. At one o'clock, she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti, but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered with tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Ugh, my spaghetti's moving, said Mr Twit, poking around in it with his fork. It's a new kind, said Mrs Twit, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which of course had no worms. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. Mr Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato covered strings around his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. Oh, it's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said, talking with his mouth full. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, said Mrs Twit. She was watching him from the other end of the table. It gave her great pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it rather bitter, said Mr Twit. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. Buy the other kind next time. Mrs Twit waited until Mr Twit had eaten the whole plateful. Then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was so squishy? Mr Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard with a corner of the tablecloth. Why? he said. And why I had a nasty bitter taste? Why? he said. Because it was worms! cried Mrs Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. <laughs>
The next chapter is called The Funny Walking Stick. To pay Mrs Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr Twit thought up a really clever and nasty trick. One night, when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick downstairs to his work shed. There, he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. This made the stick longer, but the difference was so small the next morning, Mrs Twit didn't even notice it. The following night, Mr Twit stuck on another tiny bit of wood. Every night, he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He did it very neatly so the extra bits looked like part of the real stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, Mrs Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now when something is growing very slowly, it's almost impossible to notice it happening. You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by. It's happening so slowly, you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs Twit's walking stick. It was so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting, even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr Twit said to her one day. Why, so it is, said Mrs Twit, looking at the stick. I've had a feeling there was something wrong but I couldn't for the life of me think what it was. There's something wrong, all right, Mr Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened, Mrs Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. It must suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow longer? Deadwood can't grow. Cried Mrs. Twit. It's not the stick, it's you, Mr. Twit said, grinning horribly. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs. Twit. You're shrinking, woman, said Mr. Twit. It's not possible. Oh, yes, it jolly well is, said Mr. Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old goat, and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You've got the shrinks. That's what you've got. You've got the dreaded shrinks. Mrs Twit began to feel so trembly, she had to sit down. And we'll find out what happens next time. See you soon. Bye.